Hello everyone, I'm glad you're here today. Let's get right to it. I'm going to bring you a dream that my dad dreamt. This is a part two to the American, uh, the uh, new American flag dream that I had uh, on this same night within the same two nights. Uh, I'd have to go back and look for exactly. This was August 15th, 2022. So just last week, my dad dreamt this. And the interesting thing is my mother also had a dream that same night. So I find that compelling. I don't know if you do or not. I believe the Lord is giving my dad a lot of dreams. I don't know why. If you would have asked me a couple of years ago if God did that, I would probably say, yeah, God talks to us, but not very often. So we need to be skeptical if we get too much from God. I don't believe that anymore. I think we're quickly hurtling towards a time and a season where we need to perk up and listen and be alert more than ever before, or at least in a long, long time, uh, maybe ever in the United States of America. So I, I can't, I'm doing the best I can bringing you these dreams. Are they from God? I think they are. You ask him and you discern through the Holy Spirit within you. If it doesn't resonate with you, then just move on, please. Um, with that being said, let's let's go to the Father. Father, I ask you for humility right now, and I ask you to speak through me your words, and I ask you to guard my words. And I also ask you to guard this video from the enemy who seems to be wanting to sabotage this channel. We can overcome all things through you, Jesus. And so we come to you and bow down at the cross and we thank you for what you've done for us. Grace and mercy. Thank you, Father. Bless this moment and bless the listeners and bless their hearts with love, protection, and hope. In your holy name, amen. All right. A few uh, precursors to this dream that you kind of need to know about. First of all, our family, we are not Methodist. Uh, we have very good friends who are Methodist, who we love dearly. Uh, we have not been, we don't attend, nor have we ever attended the Methodist church, nor is that in our family tree. So that is an interesting side note here on this dream. It has to do with something um, uh, that, that I'm not sure. Uh, also, John Wesley is a name that is part of this dream. And of course, he's the one who founded, um, I don't know the correct verbiage, the Methodist Church. Uh, so that's an interesting thing um, to take note of. I think overall, this dream is going to end as an encouragement to us to endure and to keep going and that we're not alone in this, we're not alone in this life, in our personal ministries, in our walk with Christ. We're not alone. That's the message in this dream overall. It is going to tell us what's coming. This is a warning dream, but it is also a teaching so that we're not surprised. And remember, they murdered our Lord. He was the first one to be crucified for this cause. He is the cause. So our focus is always on Christ, and we should not be surprised when we are ill-treated because of our belief. All right, let's go and get into it. <clears throat> August 15th, 2022. My dad had a dream, and he, I'm reading this, so we'll kind of try to get to where it actually is the meat of the dream here. Um, he was delivering, he was, he was outside, it was daytime, and he was in a parking lot, and he was going to a building, and he was delivering these square sheets of cardboard. They were about 22 by 28 inches. Uh, they were cardboard panels, and he was delivering them to a place. Uh, like it felt like a women's event, uh, women's day, women's, I don't know. There's just, that was a prevalent feeling. Uh, he had them under his arm and he was, it was, they were kind of hard to carry because of the size. It was a little awkward. He was going down a hallway. He could not find the room he was supposed to deliver them to, but he found an art room and he went in there and he said, can you use these? And they said, no. 
He left the building and was walking on a sidewalk, and there were groups of women that were passing him going the other way, and he still had those cardboard panels with them. And he thought, well, I'll just go put them in my car and get in my car and go home. He walked over a great, a very green grassy area and he went back to his car and he was putting them in and he had the trunk open or the back of the, the hatch, it, you know, like a, a suburban kind of car looking thing. Uh, he had it open the back of the car. And when he opened it, the hood opened also. And he thought, well, that's weird. He put the panels in, walked around to the front of the car, and there was a man there in an orange suit. And my dad said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm checking the motor. And my dad said, no, you're not. You're trying to steal my car. And my dad had a gun on his hip, a handgun. And my dad just showed him the handgun and the man ran away. All right, I'm going to stop right here and give an idea of this meaning of all of this. I think we have a message to offer. That's what the cardboard is. We have something to offer and deliver the message of Christ, but not everyone is going to want it. And the car represents our ministries. Sometimes we have to get back in the car and move somewhere else or or we will still be going forward, even though no, even though the the message is rejected. What we have to deliver is not wanted in this world. I also think the man who was the bad guy that was in the front of the car, he's wearing orange. I think that represents a prisoner. Prisoners often wear orange suits. Uh, a prisoner of the enemy, and I, there's sabotage going on. Our cars, when we dream about vehicles, often represent our ministry. And I think there's sabotage. And there's always been sabotage, and there will continue to be that. But the gun represents authority um, over over any kind of enemy attack. Okay, so that that's my thoughts on that. Moving forward in the dream, the man in the orange ran off and got in a vehicle nearby that was red. I think that represents certain countries that we can put together what that might mean. Now, it was not a Volkswagen, but it looked like a Volkswagen. Just putting that out there. My dad could see the license plate and there was red paint over it, but there were two messages on it that he couldn't read. He couldn't read those messages but he knew they were there. Um, also, later on, he said what it seemed like he could see a one and a nine that was still, that hadn't been completely painted over on the license plate. Once again, the identity of the enemy is often hidden, I think is what that means. Now, my dad got in his car and there was another man there which is consistent with my dad's dreams. He often has another man. I believe this is angelic being. The other man was there and it was beginning to get dark outside and they didn't have headlights. And the other man said, how will you drive without lights? And my dad said, I will put on my blinkers. And that helped as, as they went along. Um, but eventually the blinkers went out. So they stopped, you know, coming to the conclusion that that man in orange had wrecked the car and messed up the headlights. So they stopped, pulled over, uh, popped up the hood and looked under, and they saw there was a piece out of place and there was an extra piece of wire that was under the hood. And they had a flashlight at that point that had been provided and this extra piece had two slits in it, and they were able to find the place that it went, like a puzzle. Uh, they were able to put it in, and they didn't know what to do with, with the um, wire, but uh, they, they got it back in the car and checked the headlights, and they had one headlight that worked. It was on the right side, which I would think all of that represents provision. We will be provided for things 
with things when things get dark, <clears throat> whether that's spiritual darkness or literal grid down darkness. I don't know which. It applies to both. God will always provide light for us. He is the light and he is the right light, <laughs> which, you know, is the right headlight, which I think is so cool. They came to an intersection and they were suddenly behind this red car, the, 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 with the orange guy in orange was driving and they could see the message that was on the license plate. And my dad said to the guy with him, write down that, the, those two messages on the license plate. So the guy wrote them down and then my dad wanted to get, let's see, let's go to my place. So my dad wanted to get to, to get home, uh, but he also decided he would follow the guy that was driving the red car for a while. And he, fi he found himself, was led into a different place that he did not recognize. Um, it, 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 the, the red car was gone from the dream and my dad found himself in a different place. He was heading north. Now, um, he passed the street he was supposed to turn on and he pulled into someone else's yard, just up into the yard. And they, they were kind of lost, but the man with him said, go back to 100th Street and that, that was the last road that was marked. Now then, my dad would describe this as it, the street name wasn't a hundred. The street, it felt like a hundred meant a hundred degrees. Now we wondered if that was temperature, but we landed on, we felt led to, after some research, that it meant a hundredth meridian like longitude, latitude, like degrees on a GPS thing. So file that away. So they went back to 100th Street and turned onto it, and we started driving through a cornfield. And this cornfield, y'all, was, it was not good. Now, they don't harvest corn. Well, feed corn... <clears throat> They harvest when it's green for silage to feed the cattle. And they do that before it dies. But um, corn is usually harvested. Um, there's silage harvest and then there's the other harvest. And it's when the corn is dead. So harvest happens when the stalks are actually brown and dead. But this field was brown and dead but not ripe with harvest, the husks were empty. There was no corn in the husks. It, they were hollow, and it was real small, all right? So it was not a healthy cornfield whatsoever. And it was that way for as long as my dad could see, way off. And I think that represents famine. On the edge of the cornfield, a bull, a black bull that was scrawny and skinny and his head was lowered. My dad did not feel threatened at all by that bull. And let me tell y'all something. We live and have been around bulls enough that you give them a healthy respect, whether they, you think they're friendly or not. They can turn on you and cause you a lot of hurt. So this bull was on the edge of the cornfield, skinny and scrawny. They drove past it. And they finally came to an intersection and turned right, then made a left and found a major street. There was a lot of traffic and they <clears throat> decided to turn into the Methodist church building parking lot that was there. And my dad got out onto the parking lot and he thought, I'll call the police on that red car and get their call help. So he called 911. 911 equals 11, and I don't know, I know that 11 means chaos. If you put a lot of stock in numbers, that's something to file away. He called 911, and I, he said it was the Methodist church building that were in the parking lot. The police said they'd be there in 30 minutes. 
And he said, we can give you the message that was on the license plate. And so they printed the message onto the pe- one of the pieces of cardboard. But my dad could not remember what the message was in his, wa- in his waking, in the dream he did. <clears throat> but when he was telling me about it, he could not remember the message. Something we, W-E, uh, and then one nine was on there. So they held up the message to make sure every word was correct. And then they decided to, I guess they left the cardboard at the Methodist church and they drove home with the one headlight and there were cars and they were, the cars were, there was a lot of traffic and the man he had been with was not in the car at that moment because my dad was having trouble finding his home, his house. Then he saw with the, um, with the one headlight, he saw the man in the driveway of his own house holding up a lantern. And when my dad saw that man in the driveway of his own home guiding him home, He knew where he lived, and he felt relieved. He was home. Y'all, I think whatever is coming, whatever is here, whatever has happened in the nation, in the world, it's unraveling every single day. We are going to be provided for. We are going to be surrounded by angels that will minister to us. We are going to be guided for sure by the Holy Spirit and by an army of angels, they're going to guide us home. And the light of Christ cannot be extinguished. We are the light, and there is nothing that can stop us. No enemy can bring us down because we've already overcome. We've already been victorious. We've been made victorious through what Jesus has already done on the cross. All right, so that was my dad's dream. Uh, Going back to the hundredth degree, two things, John Wesley and the Methodist Church, Methodist parking lot, all of those things go together. And then when you start researching the hundredth meridian, It divides the United States in half, which I don't know if that means civil war. I don't know what that means. But when you look on, Google it. Just ask Mr. Google. He'll tell you the hundredth meridian divides the world, the, the United States, in half. On the other side of the world, it goes through countries that are not our friends. i just put it that way. Also, on one side, it, the 100th meridian was discovered or taken note of by uh, a geologist in 18, um, oh my gosh, 1874, I think. His name was John Wesley Powell. And what he did was make the analogy that when on one side to the west of the 100th parallel is arid desert, part of the United States, on the, on the east side is the moist rain part of the United States. And currently, that line not the hundredth parallel but or meridian but but it has moved to the east where there is more of an arid drought famine chunk of the United States than there used to be. Why did John Wesley why is John Wesley in this dream? I don't even know. If you can tell me, please do. But there is something valid about that. And I think I believe John Wesley was a man of God, the the method, the one who, the older one, and this geologist. There's something to take note of 
on 100, 100th Street, 100th Meridian something. So y'all can research that. Now, on a side note, my mother had a dream that night where she was woken up by a flash of light. Like, y'all, she doesn't know. She doesn't get on and look and see what an atomic bomb looks like when it hits. She said it wasn't a mushroom cloud, but it was a flash of light that was so blinding it knocked her down. And it just, boom, it was an explosion. And she woke up and thought it was real, that it had happened. She walked through the house to check it. So from these two things, I don't know what's happening, what's coming exactly, but I think we're being warned to prepare. There's might going to be difficult times of famine, drought, that we need to stay close to God. He's our light. He will be our provision, and all is going to be well for believers. And he's going to guide us home. So that's all I have today. I hope that helps. Stay close to him. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.